so what's going on? What's your name? Josh. Josh, what's going on, man? I'm Sergeant Gonzalez, Emmanuel Gonzalez. Right. What's up? What's your name? Saeed. Saeed. Where are you from? Boston? Melrose? Yeah? What's your name? Nelson. Nelson, all right. And yours? I can't hear him. <laughs> what did he say? What did he say? Ryan. Ryan, all right, cool. All right. Uh, I guess I can't hear you guys that much because um, in the military, we were kind of kind of uh, taught to speak up, okay? Uh, because if you don't hear your voice, they're not really gonna hear you, right? So uh, remember, when you're always uh, introducing yourself, um, speak up, okay? So that way the person that you're introducing yourself, it's always a better impression. Sound good? All right, so I'm Staff Sergeant Manuel Gonzalez, um, United States Air Force, active duty, okay? Um, we're gonna go over, what do we got? First set of questions is um, training, what is it? Yep. Okay, training. <laughs> Um, I have two associate's degrees through the Community College of the Air Force. The first uh, associate's degree is for electronic systems technology. Second one in, is in uh, human resources management. Can anyone tell me what human resources management is? Does anyone know what that is? Anyone? Nothing? No? Okay. Maybe All right. recruiting or something? Similar, kind of. Okay. Uh, human resources management has to deal with um, the hiring and basically the firing of new individuals or old individuals from a company. Okay, so um, as a recruiter, um, active duty Air Force. Um, and that's the next one, duties and responsibilities. I'm a recruiter for the United States Air Force. I actually hire um, in, uh, individuals into joining, okay? Um, and I don't, uh, I don't go down there and strong arm them at the high school, like uh, some, some of you guys might think that we do. But um, we just wait, we set up an appointment, they call our office, uh, we go over uh, qualifications, check and see if somebody is actually qualified to join the Air Force, um, which is the hardest part. Okay, getting somebody qualified to join. Yeah, what are the qualifications? Uh, minimum qualifications, um, you have to be at least a high school graduate or somebody who is going to graduate high school um, as, um, at the age of 17. Mm -hmm. If you're 17, um, you can join with a parental consent. Okay? Um, you have to take a placement test. All right? It's like any other college or university, you have to take the ACT or a, uh, SATs, correct? Mm -hmm. Same thing with the Air Force, we have, to, we have a placement test called the ASVAP. Um, Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. Long word for placement test, okay? Um, ASVAP test is, uh, it goes over general sciences, math and English, electronics, um, and mechanics, administration. It's basically a, a job that focuses on what your strong points are and what your weaknesses are, okay? So um, after you take that placement test, if you're strong in mechanics and electronics, then we're gonna kinda guide you into getting a job for the Air Force within the mechanics and electronics career fields, all right? If you're really, really strong in the general sciences section, then we'll maybe try to, you know, get you into the medical career fields or, um, you know, in-flight refueling or, you know, just something like that, you know, special forces for the Air Force. Now, if you don't do really well in those three sections, okay, the mechanics, electronics, or, or the general sciences, and you're really good um, or you, you're really well in, uh, like, the English portion, okay, you can understand words well, uh, you can comprehend them well, then we also have an administration section for the Air Force as well. Okay. Just like paper pushing, uh, desk job, you know, stuff like that, okay? Um, so, um, placement tests, all right? Second thing is we go over medical qualifications, all right? So, uh, most universities or colleges don't go over whether or not uh, you've ever had asthma as a child, right? Well, in the Air Force, we do. Um, we, because uh, basically, when you, when you join the Air Force, you can't have any medical issues or concerns, okay? Um, because if you were to go um, get deployed or something like that, um, you know, you may not have, uh, you know, the medicines and stuff like that that you may need um, if you've had any type of medical medical issues or anything. So, um, so medical qualifications, uh, you can't have any background. Okay, you can't have a background of any law violations. Okay, uh, and if you do, uh, more than likely you're going to be disqualified to join the Air Force. We only take America's brightest and finest when it comes around. So we take the well-rounded individual. Um, it's not somebody who, um, back in the day, you know, a lot of um, people still think that um, 
in order to get out of a law violation, um, all you got to do is tell the judge that you're joining the military. And that's not how it works anymore. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't write letters for people. We don't do recommendations for people, anything like that. You have to be a well-rounded individual um, without any issues in order for you to be able to join the military service. Okay? That's pretty much with any branch, but I would say the Air Force is just a little bit more strict when it comes down to qualifications. Okay? Um, and that's the hardest part about being somebody who hires people for the Air Force, is making sure and finding out, figuring out if the person is qualified or not. Okay? Um, and that's, all, that's where it comes down to the human resources management part. And that's what I do currently as, um, as an airman right now. Um, what's the next question? Missions, memory, story. missions. All right. So we're going to go with my first mission in the Air Force um, was um, the, my deployment to the country of Qatar, Q A T A R. Has anyone heard of that country before? No. Okay. It's a small country. Um, it's ran by a prince, but it also has like the democracy government. Okay. Um, I was out there for four months. Uh, for Operation Iraqi Freedom. Operation Iraqi Freedom could also be put under um, the conflict section that we skipped over earlier. Can you hear me fine? All right. Operation Iraqi Freedom. Second mission was Operation Enduring Freedom, and that was uh, I was be I was stationed in Afghanistan uh, for seven months. So you were with uh, Major Driscoll? Um, I w maybe we were there during the same time, but I didn't know him. Um, Afghanistan, we have several different bases, so he could have been at a different base than I was. But uh, I was out in Afghanistan for seven months. Um, that was my second mission for the Air Force. And that was in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. For how long? Uh, seven months. Mm -hmm. And the third and most favorite mission I think I've, I've done within the Air Force was uh, being stationed in Japan uh, for four years. <clears throat> All right, cool. Um, I think that's most uh, mostly the, the best information there. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, honors, award, and accommodation. Honors, awards, and accommodation medals. See all this stuff right here? Uh, those are all my honors and awards, okay? But the most important one, this one right here just kind of deals with, um, I went through training to get the job that I do today, okay? So we're gonna have to talk about that one because that one everyone has in the Air Force. Um, second one is this right here. This right here, this badge signifies um, I am a United States Air Force recruiter. Okay, when you first start recruiting and you go to the tech school for the human resources and management, all you get is the one with just the gold around it. Okay, and then after you excel in recruiting for one, two, three, or four years, um, you start getting numbers on the top of them, and you get this nice, fancy uh, silver reef around it. Okay, that silver reef means that um, as a recruiter, I excelled, and I excelled by the in the fact of in production-wise. Okay, that I produced more than 115% over my actual goal. All right. So that means I put in over an um, extra number amount of people um, based on what the Air Force expected me to. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have just earned my second silver badge because I've been recruiting for just over two years. Um, so that's uh, my awards for right now. So two silver badge recruiting badges. Um, and then we'll go to all these fancy looking things I have over here. They're called ribbons. My first and most important ribbon that I have is an Air Force Commendation Medal. And if you don't know how to spell commendation, it's spelled out for you right there on the paper. Which one is that? And that's the top one up here, the yellow one. And whenever you're looking at someone's ribbons in the United States military, in any other branch of service as well, or even a foreign government branch, um, the one that's on the top is the most important to the least important, which all the way in the bottom. Okay? And we read from left to right. The same thing with, uh, with the ribbons. Okay? So first one up on top is the Air Force Commendation Medal. And I have two of those. And we'll I'm going to explain both of them. 
The first one was for um, my four-year term and my four-year service in Japan. Okay, so after four full years, I got a I got an award. <laughs> So that tells you how important they are, right? So after four years of service in a different country, I got that, all right? Um, the second one was for my seven-month deployment to Afghanistan. The second one is for my seven-month deployment to Afghanistan. All right, now the last one that we're gonna go over for achievements and awards is my Air Force Achievement Medal. And I got that one when I deployed to the country of Qatar. I was one of about 100, uh, excuse me, three out of uh, about 100 to 150 airmen that were eligible for this award here, this gray and blue one. Um, I was three out of 100 to 150 airmen that received this award. So that kind of tells you how competitive it was. So, yeah. In order to get these awards, you kind of have to excel, not only within your job in the Air Force, um, but you have to actually do other things. So you have to be considered what we call a well-rounded well individual. Do you guys know what that means? Okay, so what is a well-rounded individual? Is it someone who just does their work nine to five and goes home? No. All right, so well-rounded individuals or well-rounded student. Is that just you, you, you're getting, uh, let's say you just get A's in your classes all the time. Is that a well-rounded student? No. Absolutely not. It's a one-minded student, right? So you're doing really well in one section. Okay, what about sports? Does that student play sports? Is he in any type of student government? Do they volunteer in the part-time? Do they work at a rescue shelter? Do they give um, food at a food bank? That's a well-rounded individual, okay? So just, just, uh, just for FYI. So in order for us to get these awards in the Air Force, you have to be a well-rounded individual. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, what's the next question? Um, okay, so just uh, two associate's degrees, obviously high school, high school graduate, uh, and two associate's degrees to the Community College of the Air Force. Um, all right, so the next one is the memory as uh, in childhood. And um, this wasn't too long ago. I mean, I've only been a graduate for about 10 years now. So, um, but my, my number one memory from childhood was when I took a two and a half senior vacation. Like, you know, when you, when you graduate high school and you go on like a senior trip? Um, we went on our senior trip to Spain for about two and a half weeks. And the reason why that, that, that traveling was so important to me is because um, it opened up my eyes and it opened up my views to travel and being a worldly traveled and a, a well-traveled uh, person. Um, as a well-traveled person or a worldly person, you kind of get different aspects of different cultures, um, how different things are ran in other countries, and, and basically opens up your eyes to, to different things. Okay, um, if you live in Melrose and you stay in Melrose for the rest of your life and don't ever move or go anywhere, or you go to Salem State University and then, and then you work in Melrose or within this area, um, you're never going to be open up to, to new things. Okay, and it's, or it's going to be hard for you to because all you've ever, ever known is this area here. Okay, if you never move out of state or you've never moved to a different country or anything like that, I highly recommend it. Um, have you guys, any of you guys ever traveled overseas or to a different country before? Yeah, where? Ireland, okay. Wow, okay. Anyone else? No other countries? Nothing? Okay. All right. So, how did, what did you think about Ireland? Was it completely different than the United States? How people ran things? Yeah. Obviously, how they spoke was different, right? Their dialect. Yeah. It's English, but sometimes you can't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and how they say things. So, you could be asking for one thing in English, like regular American English, and it means something completely different. 
<laughs> in a different country's English. So um, you may have had that situation happen to you. I'm not sure. Yeah, like in Ireland, they call them chips or French fries. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so. Yeah, so this that, that's just one thing. Fries, they don't really know what <laughs> yeah. So that, and that's just one thing. Um, but uh, so like fish and chips, right? Fish, but fish and chips they give you French fries, right? That's because fish and chips is. Uh, it's like originates from over there, so that's why it's, it's that's why it's named that. Um, so basically, uh, if you can get some you know, travel in, I definitely uh, recommend it. Okay, what's the next question? Marital status. Marital status. Okay, um, I am married. I've been married uh, to Marisa, M A R I E S A, um, and. Uh, she is studying to be a doctor in physical therapy at Northeastern University. So that's one of the reasons why I moved to Boston. She got accepted into school, and in order for me to come here and still be active duty military and in the Air Force, um, I applied to be a recruiter. And as a recruiter, um, you're not actually stationed to a base, you're actually stationed to an office somewhere. And my office is in downtown Boston. Um, her school is in Northeastern, so we kind of carpool in back and forth. Um, that's pretty cool to yeah. have an office there. Too. Yeah, so um, I'm not actually stationed on the base or anything like that. Um, you guys know where the Lowe's Theater is on the Common? Yeah. In the Boston Common? Okay. Um, do you guys know where the McDonald's is at? Yeah. Okay, do you know where the subway is? Yes. Yeah. All right, right. My office is next door to the subway. Really? Yeah. So the subway sandwich, and you got Lambert's, so I'm, I'm, that's where I'm at. Okay. Um, and I'm the first floor. You know where that's at? You do? So I'm on the first floor. The funny, what the funny thing is about is I'm on the first floor. Um, our whole office is all glass windows, um, and uh, it's a one-way mirror. So um, I can see out, but they can't see in. So people are always walking by, um, checking their teeth, checking their hair. Girls, Suffolk University is right there. So girls are always checking themselves out, making sure their stuff's all, all good. You know what I mean? <laughs> making sure everything's good, you know? And making sure that things, everything's in the, in the back is good, everything in the front's good. Uh, it's really, really funny, man. Um, we have, I mean, we have homeless people looking at themselves and doing funny faces, making each other, making themselves laugh. You know, just so many, I mean, anything you can think of. I had someone pee on the corner of my office one time. Um, so anything that you can think of, um, I've seen right there in the front of my office. So, and they, for some reason, they don't think that anyone works in there, you know? So they always check themselves out. And eventually they find out, and they're, they're looking at themselves, they're checking their teeth because they just had lunch. And then they realize, oh, that's, this is probably someone's office. And so they finally try to see in. And in order for you to see in my office, you kind of have to cover all the light around it and kind of look through. And then by that time, we, we, all of us in my office are already like looking and waving, you know? So when they finally look, they just get really embarrassed by that time. Uh. <laughs> and they run off. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's why I'm in Boston. Uh, what's the next one? Occupations and careers. Um, occupations, careers. I mean, I'm I'm an Air Force recruiter, um, as of right now, and that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. United States Air Force is what I'll be doing probably until I'm 38 years old. And why do I say 38? Because that'll put me at 20 years. That's retirement. That's when I am eligible to retire in the Air Force. Um, how many of your parents are still working over the age of 38? All right. So I could tell you right now. Being, a, being in the military, that's what's so good about it, is we can retire at the age um, of tw at anything over 20 years of service, you can retire. So if you wanted to get a second job, if you wanted to be like move to Hawaii and be a beach bum, you're still young enough to be able to enjoy life and not have to worry about anything, and you're going to be making a retirement. Um, the good thing is if you get married, um, if you have kids, uh, they all have the same benefits as you do um, up until uh, basically you, you pass away. So. It's a pretty good, pretty good program. Um, Is that anything? only for the Air Force? For all the uh, it's all different branches. We all have uh, the same benefits when it comes down to that. So uh, we still have, you know, you retire, you st you'll still for the rest of your life have uh, access to the base. Um, we have uh, like a, a grocery store, like a stop and shop, or we call it the commissary. Uh, we have a, a store like a, a Walmart or a Target uh, where you can buy all that stuff. And it's all tax free too. So um, it's pretty neat because I always go shopping grocery shopping at the commissary because it's probably like anywhere from, um, if I, you know, if you buy a, a full basket of groceries, and I know this is a little bit out of your guys' realm because you probably don't go sh grocery shopping all the time. But for instance, if you go grocery shopping at Stop and Shop, 
I want to say Whole Foods or something like that. For a basket full of, of groceries, you're looking at anywhere from 100 to, uh, to 250 dollars, depending on what you buy. If you like meat, like my, like me, I like meat. I like cooking steak and stuff. Um, so I'm looking at uh, about 250 dollars uh, for a basket full of, of groceries. And if I go and get those same groceries on the commissary on base, I'm looking at anywhere from about 100 to maybe 150. So it's it's roughly about hundred dollars cheaper when I shop at the commissary. Cool. So it's pretty wild. Uh, um, so that's kind of uh, what else we got. Uh, important events in your adulthood. In a, my adulthood. Okay. So I would say the biggest uh, change that I had when I moved uh, was when I moved to Boston. When I moved to New England. <laughs> And the reason why that was such a major change and a major transition for me and a major event in my life is because Boston, or I would say New England, is different than any other part in the country. Um, uh, people are just different. You know, they're, they're a lot, I don't want to say because it's cold here, but they're a lot colder than, let's say, if you were in the south. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you're walking on the, on the sidewalk and it's morning time and you cross someone, do you normally say good morning to them? No. Absolutely not, right? I had a hard time adjusting to that when I moved here. Right? When I tell somebody good morning and they don't, oh, I'm so good, thank you. Um, and somebody doesn't uh, acknowledge that you're even there, um, I, I kind of felt that not only offensive, um, but, but hard to adapt to. Okay? Um, anywhere other than here, uh, people usually will tell you good morning at least when, you walk into this, when you're walking by or anything like that. Where did you say you were from? I'm again? from Albuquerque. You guys know where that is? Yep, New Mexico. Um, so it, it took me a really long time. And moving from, from actually Japan to here, it was easier um, or harder, excuse me, to move from Japan to here than it was for me to move from the United States to Japan. Because the Japanese was just so much warmer and like welcoming that uh, it was just, I thought it was going to be a hard time moving down there, you know. And it was just, it was awesome. I loved it. And then when I moved here, it was just complete culture shock of, of people and it's just, you know, people don't really care about you here. They yeah. could care less about you. And until, until you become friends with them and, and you kind of meet the locals, and, but, it, but it's hard to do so, you know what I mean? You have to break down those barriers of people and say, hey, you know, what's going on? You gotta actually like introduce yourself into new people and stuff like that. But when, and once you do that, um, and that's why now um, I love it because I have broken down those barriers to other people. Um, I've met new friends, I met locals. Um, I live in Woburn, so just right down the street. And all my friends that I have are all from Wolverine and Winchester area. So um, now I enjoy Boston because we always go out, we always hang out, stuff like that. But when I first moved here, was, that was probably the biggest significant event in my adulthood was moving to Boston and not knowing a single person out here. So. Um, what else do you guys have? Any other questions? We're pretty much done with that, I think. Is that the last question? Yeah. yeah? yeah. Okay. Anything else you guys have? Any other questions? Who else did you guys talk to today? Um, Daniel Jones, he's in the Air Force. Yeah, he's actually, um, he's at my headquarters. He's actually um, works within my chain of command. So I'm a recruiter and he works through the recruiting headquarters um, with us. So I uh, found out he went to the Air Force Academy, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what else? Any other thing? You guys have any other questions? So who's the video production? You guys? Two. One, two, two of you guys? Three? All right, and why are you guys, why are you, is that a class for you? Yeah. Yeah, and why are you in that class? I want to be a director. You want to be a director? You too? What do you want to do? Just cause, just to take it? Yeah, what about you? You just picked it? How do you like it? Yeah? It's really good. You guys, you guys enjoy it? Yeah. Okay. Um, would you guys have ever known that we have video production in the Air Force? No, I would not have known that. No one would have known that, huh? So, yeah, we have video production. We have actual uh, um, anchors, newscasts. We have all that stuff, but in the Air Force side. Um, when we have our, our gentlemen and, and women that serve overseas, uh, they got to get that, that news that um, you get from uh, Channel 4 or Fox News, right? We also have to get that news out there overseas as well. So we have people that are 
um, actually newscasters, uh, production, directors, all that stuff that are actually active duty service members in the Air Force. Do you know that? It's crazy, right? Yeah. So almost every single job, I would say almost any single job that you can do in the civilian world, you could also do in the Air Force as well. So what do you want to do? Do you know yet? No. No? Okay. Do you have an interest in anything? Not right now? No. Just kind of just going to school, just going with the flow? Well, yeah, I'd like to be a lawyer, I guess. A lawyer? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, did you know we have lawyers in the Air Force? No. Yeah. We have a military uh, justice system, okay? And um, through every single person that works in the military, we have to abide by not only the civilian justice system, right, the courts and laws and stuff like that, but we also have a justice system called the Uniform Code of Military Justice, UCMJ, right? So we have, actually as military people, we have two justice systems that we have to abide by. So that's why um, most military people are pretty sharp because if you break one rule in this system, it's also probably a, a broken rule in the other system as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or if it's not a broken rule in this system, it is in this one. <laughs> so that makes it, um, that's why the qualifications for the Air Force and the military are so strong because um, we have to have people that are so much better than that normal or regular person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, yes, we do have lawyers in the Air Force. Um, why do we need lawyers in the Air Force? Because we do have that judicial system. Sometimes airmen get in trouble or you know they get married or they want to adopt a kid overseas or adopt a child or whatever you know you need a power of attorney you know stuff like that and the good thing about that is for the, you're still getting paid in the Air Force as a lawyer um, but it's free for everyone else that's in the Air Force so I don't have to pay an Air Force lawyer to um, to uh, represent me it's free for me because that's one of my benefits as a military person it's pretty crazy right yeah so in case something did happen or uh, like when I first moved here, um, I had a rental agency that was trying to take $2,000 of my money. <laughs> $2,000, that's not, that's not cheap, you know? So um, I went and talked to our, our, our legal office and uh, all it took was one phone call from our legal office and I had that check back within like three days. So you could use <laughs> the Air Force lawyers for like problems outside of absolutely. the Air Force judicial system? Yep, okay. yeah, absolutely. Um, because they're a regular certified boarded uh, past the boards uh, lawyer. So it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, what about you? Um, I don't know. You don't know yet? No. Okay. Any interest in anything? Uh, I enjoy like um, cars and things like that. I enjoy like, computers and stuff like that. I have a big interest in like, computers and stuff. Okay. All right. Well, um, did you know the Air Force? runs um, the whole cyber system for pretty much the whole military. Did you know that? Yeah. The Air Force is in charge of um, all the anti-hacking system for all the branches of service to include um, like the White House and the Pentagon. All right. So up into the highest level of security, uh, internet and cyber systems, the Air Force is actually in charge of. It's wild, right? Yeah, so we got people that go to training for the Air Force that can learn anything from binary codes to hacking, anti-hacking. Um, we have people in the Air Force that try to hack the Air Force system, right, to, to try to find flaws. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so if you're ever interested in Air Force uh, computer stuff. Mechanics, we have mechanics that uh, work on F-15s, which are our fighter jets. Um, we have uh, cargo planes. Um, in the Air Force. Um, we have mechanics that work on those, so if you're interested in mechanics, we have that. Um, do you guys, any of you guys know what an F-22 is or an F-35? Okay, yeah. it's our brand new fighter jets that we have, okay? Um, and uh, those things are basically a flying computer, a flying supercomputer. Are they like the drones? Almost, but it, these are, the drones are, um, are unmanned aerial vehicles, yeah. um, but the F-22 and the F-35 are actually piloted by a regular person. The, uh, the drones are, are remotely piloted by somebody who's still a pilot in the Air Force. Just from like a base or something. But yeah, it's, a, it's in a separate, it's a remote location. Yeah, so they know all the fundamentals of being a pilot and, and are trained and certified to be a pilot, but they just fly them from a remote location. It saves lives, it saves you know, all kinds of other stuff. Money. Any other questions?